Um, okay. Um, now, uh, for memory management, to execute a program, whether it's all the program or part of the program, why, why uh, is the author saying this, all or part? Because what happens is that your program would be divided into a set of processes that build up the program. So you might not load the whole program in one piece. So uh, you can actually have the program divided into uh, multiple pieces, processes, and therefore, you know, the execution, you might not be executing the whole program, but part of it. Okay. Uh, so whatever that is going to be executed has to be in main memory. Okay, you will not be executing something that hasn't been loaded yet. You can't. Okay, so the actual execution has to be in memory. Uh, of course, we have uh, some stuff that are loaded into what we call virtual memory that has to be dealt in a different way, but, you know, uh, as a rule of thumb, for actual execution, this has to be in main memory. Virtual memory is going to be dealt with in chapter 10. Uh, this also applies to data, you know. Uh, uh, whatever data is needed by the program has to be in memory. So see how important memory management is. And that's why the memory manager is part of the kernel. It's running all the time. Not just because of the loading, but also for determining many, many other stuff. Memory management determines what is in memory and uh, 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 when will it be in memory. Okay, so scheduling, see? Scheduling and in chapter... 10, we will actually see a lot of scattering techniques for memory that are slightly different from the CPU scheduling. Chapter 5 talks about CPU scheduling, how you can schedule the processes so they can execute on CPU. In chapter 10, you will see different set of scheduling algorithms that determine which to be loaded into memory and which would be taken out of memory. Okay, um, so why is this important? Because of the CPU utilization. You need to bring the CPU utilization up. This is, by the way, one of the most important objectives of any scheduler, is to bring the CPU utilization up. You don't want the CPU... Uh, uh, to be idle. You want it to always be working. Okay, why? To bring the uh, uh, efficiency up. Here we have also something called computer response to users, which is the response time. And this response time we have a lot to talk about. Uh, memory management activities, you know, you keep track of which parts of memory are currently being used. Used. Okay. Why is this to determine the uh, uh, empty spots in memory that you can use to upload uh, programs into? And deciding which processes, okay, and data to move into or out of memory. So you decide which to be loaded and which to be unloaded, if that's uh, uh, a correct uh, term, okay? And the allocation and the deallocation of memory space. <coughs> okay, so this is all achieved by memory management. And that's why memory management is part of the uh, uh, kernel. If you think about it, Nothing, absolutely nothing can happen, okay, on a computer without those, right? Every single instruction that you're going to be executing has to be in memory, 
All right. To upload any program, you might need to bring a, a program, another program down to make space and so on and so forth. So this module is very, very important and therefore it's part of the kernel. File system management. Operating system provides uniform logical view of information storage. Okay, while data is being uh, uh, stored in a physical media, could be like this, you literally see it differently. You see it a space that is divided to folders. We call it uh, directories, folders. And every folder could contain subfolders and files and so on. Imagine that this view that you see, the logical view, is literally, you know, uh, stored in such a space. Okay. So, the file management, as we say, files usually organized into uh, directories. A directory is a folder, okay. Uh, you can uh, actually set a directory to be seen by uh, certain users and not seen by others. You can do the protection and so on. All right. Um, the OS activities here include creating and deleting files and directories. The basic primitives to manipulate files. So you can copy a file, you can rename a file, you can delete a file, and so on. Same with directories. Mapping files into secondary storage. We will talk about this in uh, chapter 3. Um, uh, you can also back up the files, so back files up into some uh, stable, non-volatile storage media. This is also being dealt with in Chapter 3. We call it file memory mapping, which is very big thing. And it explains why, if you remember, when you were writing uh, C and opening a file, we always told you after you're done with the file, you have to close the file. Okay, we never told you why. You need to close the file. Okay, this is being uh, explained in details in uh, uh, chapter three in the mapping between files and memory. <coughs> How about the mass storage? There are usually disks used to store data that doesn't fit in main memory or data that must be kept for a long period of time. I mean, this is... Uh, uh, understood um, and um, uh, you know the OS activities is to mount and unmount drives or you can do free space management okay how uh, sometimes when we do you know a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, inserting files into the uh, space and then delete and so on you cause what we call holes that you will see later on so one of the uh, management here is to collect those uh, holes together to make bigger space to uh, use f to put in something that is you know needs more uh, space you, we will talk about that in details later uh, you have here uh, storage allocation disk scheduling, partitioning, which is, uh, you know, dividing uh, the uh, disk, physical disk into uh, multiple logical drives, you know, the protection and the, for the protection, we need to talk about it uh, probably in few slides because, uh, <coughs> um, well, we'll talk about it. Okay. Now, caching Caching is a very important principle, okay, performed at many levels in computer for the hardware and software. Let me um, 
explain you something. Let's assume that we have someone here who goes and brings stuff from a stack. Certain items are put here. Okay, so this one goes bring some stuff and give it to a very fast guy who puts it in the other stack. If this is very slow and this is very fast, unfortunately, the whole system will work with the speed of this guy. So what is the solution? Bring someone who's much faster than the uh, uh, slow one, but slower than the uh, very fast one. The existence of this one in the middle will literally bring the speed of the whole system up. Okay, so this is what the cache does. As I mentioned uh, before, uh, having a cache between, let's say, uh, you know, the, the, the main memory is a cache between the disk and, the, and the, the cache memory, right? The cache memory is a cache between the main memory and registers. You know, if you buy a computer without cache, it becomes very slow. Even though it's the same computer, it's the same memory, it's everything, but without the cache. The one between the main memory and the registers. It becomes very slow. And usually when you go to a technician and ask, you know, why my computer is very slow? If there's no problem with uh, the hard disk or anything, then, you know, they uh, directly tell you, you need a cache. Maybe you can increase the cache, you know. So, uh, yeah. Um, here are statistics that, you know, um, you don't really need to memorize or anything. It just compares the speed and uh, the uh, size and so on between the registers, the cache memory, the main memory, the solid state disk, and the magnetic uh, disk. Okay. So now, when you want to migrate something from the magnetic disk, what happens? You move this block of data from magnetic disk to main memory. Of course, if you have disk or something, then, you know, it's going to be the hierarchy. And then from main memory to cache. And then from the cache to the registers. Okay. For the I.O. subsystems, one purpose of operating system is to hide the details of the hardware devices. Okay. So as if you have a back end, a back uh, store or something, you know, here that has stuff and you have an employee that is the interface that talks to you. You as a client, you don't see what's happening in there. You don't. Okay. So this one works as the interface between you and whatever that is happening in the back end. All right. So this is one of the purposes of operating systems is to hide the details that are happening. So the I.O. subsystem responsible for memory management of I.O. input output, including buffering, you know, storing data in temporary files and so on and so forth. Caching. We know now what caching is. Okay, spooling, we'll talk about it, okay? Um, uh, you have here general uh, device uh, driver interface, of course, that's part of the defined in the I.O. Don't worry if you, if you find this confusing, we're going to talk about it in details later, okay? And uh, the drivers for specific hardware devices, like the drivers for the hard disk and so on. Okay. Now we talk about one uh, thing that the operating system does, protection and security. Okay, of course, we know what security is, okay, and protection. Uh, let me talk about this quickly, and then I have to talk about privacy for uh, some reason. People really mix between privacy and security. I don't know why. So we have to know the difference between 
the two of them. So for the protection, any mechanism for controlling access of process or users to uh, 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 resources. So you want to protect your uh, resources, okay? So this is the protection that the operating system does. It works as a shell around your resources. So you cannot directly access the resource. Okay, it has to be done through the operating system and therefore you are protecting your resources. Security, you know, you defend uh, your system against internal or external attacks. We know external attacks. Are there any internal attacks? Yes. You will see this in chapter 6. Okay, and uh, you will see how we do it. All right. Um, with that, you know, uh, for the security, you have, you know, uh, user identities like user IDs, security IDs, name, um, uh, whatever uh, number that is associated with, uh, passwords, groups that this user belongs to, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, um, this is uh, something that uh, we're going to be talking about later. But I want now to talk about the difference between security and uh, the uh, privacy and the mixing between them is not really something that is, uh, uh, you know, should be happening because they cannot be uh, uh, more different. Imagine here is your apartment. Okay, here it is. This is your apartment. You have here rooms like that. Okay, you have a few rooms. Okay, and so on. Me coming to visit you or to get into the apartment, I need security. Okay, permission. What does it mean? There is something that would tell me whether I can get in from the very first place or not. So coming into the system requires security. Username, password, uh, fingerprint, eye uh, print, whatever that is, okay? The fact that I have permission to get into the apartment doesn't mean that I have to uh, the permission to go into each and every room in, inside it. Maybe this one I shouldn't be seeing. Maybe this one I shouldn't be seeing. This is the privacy level. Privacy is very related to visibility. Visibility. Okay. Yes, I could be having the permission to get in a security, but I don't have the visibility permission to see everything. So you would allow me to see this one as an example, the guest room, but nothing. <coughs> Sorry, nothing else. Okay. So that would be the difference between privacy and security. They cannot be any more different. Okay.